This lesson is dedicated to going into more detail about using grids in layout design. You can download the 11-page Grid Guide PDF resource that contains all of the content we'll be going over in this lesson and more. Let's first talk about the basic anatomy of a layout grid. First of all, margin. It's the thick border that runs along the outside of a grid or document. Wider margins provide more breathing room for edges, bends, and folds, and provides a nice white space for the overall content. Columns run vertically, downward from the top of the margin to the bottom. These are very helpful in magazine and editorial layouts to find placements for paragraphs, headlines, and text. Rows contain the areas that run horizontal across the page. Gutters are areas between the columns and rows. It is nice to keep these the same width throughout to maintain consistency in your design. A more less known term, flow lines. Flow lines are lines that run horizontally across the grid, and they can help the reader follow content. Modules are the boxes or areas created by the vertical and horizontal lines of a grid. You can have big module boxes and have a big loose open grid, or you can have very tight module boxes and have a lot of them and have a very tight grid. Spatial zones consist of several modules to create blocks and content areas to give you a guide on placing photos and blocks of text. This can be large or small depending on the content. So grids come in many different varieties and flavors, and we'll review four of the most popular grid categories. A manuscript grid is great for books and long continuous placement of text. Manuscript layouts consist of one center block that divides up the page and creates a clear margin and text area, header and footer. This is the most basic form of a grid and it's found in many word processing documents as basic guides for creating margins. Column grids are perfect for magazine layouts and spreads or anything that has a mixture of photos, quotes, and text. Column grids allow you to create places to break up the type in photos. These can be two, three, four, or even 12 columns, depending on the complexity of your layout. Modular grids, the most flexible grid available. Modular grids allow for lots of mixing of type, photos, and design elements. You can have a lot of variety with which modules are chosen for element placement. These are great for posters and flyers, magazine covers, and designs that require more creative arrangements. They can even be used for arranging a list of items and photos that need the same spacing or have the same order. Hierarchical grids. These are mostly used for the web where fixed grid layouts will not work. The gutters and margins can change in size throughout depending on the space of the browser. Hierarchical comes from the word hierarchy, meaning order. These grids follow an order of importance with the most important items larger and toward the top, with less important items further below and smaller. A perfect fit for a website layout or mobile app design where the most important items need to be shown higher in the layout. So what are some tips and tricks to properly using a grid in layout design? Well, first of all, headlines. Use grids to find placement for headlines and design elements. Also, make sure to use the margin. Remember to feel free to extend unimportant items off the margins, like parts of photos and non-text design elements. This will help the piece feel a little less boxy and feel more alive. And make sure that vital text stays out of the margin. Remember, you can go vertical, and you can go vertical with text to add contrast with other horizontal elements. And you can use the grid as a guide for placement. You can break up large bodies of text. Try adding a quote to break up large text areas. You can also use more contrast to your type by creating smaller headlines at the start of these larger areas and use the grid to find the right placements. Feel free to play around with overlapping elements. Another way to break up a boxy layout is to overlap elements using the grid, like this quote box overlapping the yellow photo. And remember, layout design extends to digital stuff as well, including social media posts. So this is a simple social media graphic, and it's a simple modular grid with some margins. I'm using the grid not only to find out where to place the elements, but where to frame certain parts of the elements, like the central part of this logo or the person's face, as seen in this example. 
and beyond layout design, grids can be applied when you're doing logo design. And we'll be doing lots of this later in the course and in future lessons. It can help you find the right spacing between the symbol and the text. It can help you find the right balance between the text and the symbol. And grids can also be used in branding. Wider margins can create an elegant, ample white space, giving the design a very modern, structured look. And grids can be used for brand materials to make sure there's consistent spacing throughout. It can also help with placement and spacing between text and elements. And since we're talking about how to use grids in all aspects of design, we can't ignore web design. In Grids for Web, above you'll see a classic 12-column grid layout with a small gutter in between each column. This is traditionally seen in desktop website layouts. And this grid is a default grid in the Adobe app called Adobe XD, which is commonly used for website and mobile app layout design, and is slowly replacing Photoshop as the app of choice for this task. To the left, you'll see a common four grid layout for a mobile app design. These columns can help guide placement of the beginning and ends of elements, photos, and even buttons. They can even assist in helping you know the placement of multiple columns of information, like in this example, to the right. Remember that grids can be turned diagonally. Who says grids have to be perfect left, right, up, and down? What about turning them diagonally and creating an interesting spin on the grid? I'll have several lessons later on editorial design layouts, but you can also use it when creating these layouts. Not only do they help keep both sides of the spread of a magazine article, for example, cohesive, they also help keep even spaces between the gutters and provide a professional organization of large amounts of information. Lastly, remember, grids are not a requirement for having a strong layout design, but they can really be helpful in guiding your layout decisions. Make sure to download the grid guide to see helpful examples of grids in action. The projects we work on later will use grids of all types for logo design and layout design. And yes, there'll even be projects that break the grid or not use the grid at all. Remember, these are all just tools to help you make design decisions, but the best decision maker of all is you.